I'm saying that the atheist is missing out. Think of it like looking at the great Leonardo da Vinci painting, The Last Supper, but through the eyes of a dog. But through the eyes of a dog. Wow, what a shitty thing to say to someone. You old, wrinkly, gray-haired, confirmation bias using logical fallacy spewing, scientifically illiterate, privileged troglodyte. How dare you say all atheists are dogs? Is it because you couldn't actually think of a better analogy to why you resorted to calling all atheists dog-brained? Now, dogs are smart in their own right. I'm not trying to uh, belittle dogs or anything like that. Because dogs have a pretty high intelligence. But, and if you're a dog owner, tell me how smart your dog is in the comment section so I can read up my cat. So, let's see another excuse he gives for calling atheists delusional dogs. Hi everyone, and welcome to The Brock Lurie Show again. Hey, it's me, George Lee. Like and subscribe for more videos. Look, one of the things that we talk about so much is how the atheist mindset is so destructive. This man seems to never have any sources to back up what he says. Let's list all the sources for this claim you always seem to spew, Brock. Oh, that's right. Zero, because there's no sources to be cited, because you're pulling it out of your old ass. You want to talk destructive mindset? Let's talk the destructive mindset of saying all atheists are immoral dogs who can't possibly understand the complexity of things or the beauty of the world, like you can, because of your silly belief system, because they don't follow your belief system in a being that you can't prove in any way besides you have an emotional connection, but shouldn't prove anything to anyone of sound mind and judgment at all. That type of dehumanization of a group of people has been shown to lead to people harming said members of that group. Because to them, it doesn't matter. Brock Lois said they're godless heathens who are pretty much dogs and pigs. Thanks, Brock, for spreading falsehoods and misinformation, potentially inspiring harm on the AKS community. Thank you so much. But I also want to talk about how the atheist is really missing out. Yes, missing out on so much of the beauty that the world has to offer. That's incredibly disingenuous of you to say. Why is it this man keeps saying some of the most wildly offensive shit while at the same time propping himself up as an intellectual despite it not being the actual case? I see the beauty of the world and I acknowledge it. I acknowledge the beauty and wonder of how this world came to be from more or less nothing to what we are now and I find it wonderful. I'm not even talking about God necessarily, but you cannot have beauty without God. We've talked about this at length before as well. Look, there's an expression. It's like giving pearls to swine. What does that mean? It means that pigs will never appreciate beautiful pearls. Oh, so not only am I an unintelligent dog, but I'm also a pig, a swine? What the fuck? Dude, get your facts straight. Am I a human? Am I a dog? Am I a swine? What is it? Oh wait, you can't, because that would completely contradict your own agenda. Come on, man. That's the way it is, I think, in terms of appreciating what the world and what the universe has to offer to even the atheist. The atheist loves beauty. He claims to love music. He claims to love art. He claims to love entertainment and a good story. But in reality, they shouldn't. And yet we do. Here we atheists have so much enjoyment and love of things, and love of things, just like everyone else. So it just kind of proves you wrong. Man, this arrogant ass is all so clueless. Because all that is provided by way of God. Now, what do I mean by this? I'm saying that the atheist is missing out. Think of it like looking at the great Leonardo da Vinci painting, The Last Supper, but through the eyes of a dog. The dog would have no sense of its beauty. To him, it's just a bunch of colors. It appears to represent some men, and that's about it. But that's the way, ultimately, the atheist would have to look at the world. The beautiful seas, the beautiful mountains and such, without appreciating how complex those mountains and seas have been. I see the complexity of things. I see the complexity of life. Oh, you're saying because it's so complex, that means the universe had to be created. Well, if complexity is required to have been designed, and the Earth somehow requires a creator, and creator being more complex than the Earth and universe itself, had to have had a creator. So, where did your God come from? What created your God? If God came from nowhere, why couldn't the universe come from nowhere? And uh, slowly over time, life would uh, begin to form. These guys really don't have any answer for that. He's always there. He's God. They can't answer that kind of stuff. This is a big logical fallacy this grown ass man is using to justify his delusional behavior and belief system. Why did I say delusional? Because he himself said it. And what it took to get there. More significantly, he cannot appreciate how incredible it is that all the stars, 
lined up the way they did that were perfectly adjusted next to the sun in a way that's in a Goldilocks orbit, as they call it. We're not too close, not too far away. To say nothing of the ozone, to say nothing of how all the vegetation on the planet is sufficient to give us all of our minerals and nutrients that we need. To say nothing of the idea that we need. To say nothing of how we have exchanged a deal between carbon that we see to the trees and the trees that we see to us. There's beauty in all of this. And yet, the atheist cannot possibly meaningfully appreciate it any more than that dog can appreciate the Leonardo da Vinci painting that I just spoke about. To him, Okay, now you keep saying that they can't, but you're not showing why or how, and you're not giving any reason besides, I feel smarter because my delusion makes me feel more comfortable. It's not a valid reason to call atheists pigs and dogs. It's just a slab of colors that may or may not be recognizable as human forms, and that's about it. Oh, look, a slab of stupidity made to look and sound human. It's working, but it still has some many kinks to adjust, apparently. And so I put it to you, my dear atheist friend, we are far from friends. I don't call my friends ignorant dogs and pigs who deserve eternal hellfire for not believing like me. Or would I knowingly lie about them, as you have about us atheists? You may very well be missing out. The believer appreciates all that it took to get there, just like we humans appreciate the extraordinary talent to finally get to something like The Last Supper. Hey dude, until you're able to provide evidence of any God existing, you should probably not be saying that we are denying something we don't believe in, understand? Because it doesn't make any sense to say that. Do you deny Santa Claus because you don't believe in him? No, you don't deny Santa Claus' existence because you don't believe in his existence. There's no evidence of him existing to even really deny. There's claims of him existing, but those are all fabricated claims that we know about that are fabricated. So why say the same about the lack of belief in a God? Anecdotal claims don't count as evidence. I'm just saying. That should be a given. Ancient oral traditions passed down orally decades before they were written down and not having unsigned original manuscripts, as well as poor translations due to human error and human manipulation, doesn't count as proof of anything, let alone your God. Let me ask my wonderful audience a few simple questions. How can one demonstrate the existence of, let's start with spirits for example? How can we reliably test this claim and try to falsify and potentially prove the existence of spirits? Can it be replicated and repeated in a controlled environment? Can any layman like myself or you be able to do so? You can replace spirits with a god or demons or unicorns, and it still applies. I'm Barack Lurie. Thanks for watching. We'll talk with you next week. Why do people like Barack refuse to put me to shame and make me a believer in the supernatural? Maybe it's because deep down inside they know it's more or less role-playing make-believe, and they have to fool themselves into believing it? Please, take what I said into consideration, please. Why do people like Barack refuse to put me to shame and make me a believer in the supernatural? But hey, I have no idea. That's just a speculation for me, that's all. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. If you are uh, new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Leave a comment sharing your thoughts. Tell me about your smart dogs or cats. Anything really, if you have a pet bird, tell me about it. Barack, if you ever get a chance to watch this video, take what I said into consideration. Thank you and bye.